Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're going to do a project today, the uh, Ruby on Rails blog app project, which is part of the Odin project. So in this project, you will get the opportunity to actually build a real Rails application. It's not a trivially, triv trivially simple one either. It's got a lot of wrinkles and things that you're not going to understand. To be honest, you're kind of going to into the deep and so don't worry if you don't understand what exactly you're doing in all the steps. The point here is to get familiar with the process of creating a Rails app, uh, what things generally look like, and what you don't know. When you get to the end of this project, you can consider yourself remarkably persistent and resilient. Now, this is probably true for people who haven't done this before, but I've built plenty of stuff like this, so I think this is going to be pretty straightforward. So, do the getting started project up on section 9.2. It ties together model view controllers and gives a pretty good overview of the common commands you'll use when using Rails. The remainder of the tutorial covers topics that you may not have been introduced to, like concerns and authentication, so it is hard to understand the big picture. In addition, these sections can be confusing because the instructions do not follow the same copy-paste pattern. Okay, so what is this about 9.2? Uh, 9.2, 9.2, rendering partials. Okay, so we did that in, in previous ones. Um, you should have Rails installed already, so section 3.1 might not be relevant. It might still be prudent to run the version, dash dash version. Oh, okay, up to 9.2, so they're saying do all of the ones. So that's going to cover all the topics. What is Rails? Creating a new Rails project. Hello Rails. Auto MVC for you. CRUD. Adding a second model and refactoring. Okay, cool. Um, nice. So we're not going to run through that in this video. You should have Rails installed already, so section 3.1 might not be relevant. Yeah. Make sure you commit to Git regularly, so you run. So if you run into any issues, you can revert to an earlier commit without having any to, to do that from scratch. So yeah, I'll keep this up. Pay attention to any error message you get as your app builds, even though they're, they'll be unplanned. You'll see all these messages again and again when you're building Rails apps, so it's helpful to start familiarizing yourself with that. Try to make a mental note of the commands and generators you can use. Rails provides a lot of helpful generators, taking a lot of, plain, of the pl pain out of creating different, different parts of a web application. When you're finished, push your code to GitHub. Don't forget to deploy your app to Heroku, and so we're going to do all that. Uh, the official guides, so they're here they're just giving us resources, introduce you to Ruby core, a 30 minute vi video which will teach you through the magical syntax of Ruby on Rails and how to use Pry to debug. So yeah, I would recommend going through all of these. I might go through this later. Um, but for now, I think I can be able to, I think I'll be able to do that with just this one. It doesn't give you any specs for what it should look like. So let's do a live preview of somebody else's. Looks like they haven't. Uh, protected it so people are making all sorts so it looks like you can do a new article great article okay author Ian create the comment yeah and they're using bootstrap here add a comment so useful programmer so let's see this blogger Looks like, oh yeah, it's actually there. And then you can add comments, so nice one. Yeah. All right, so there's the comment, here's the body, and it looks like you can actually edit the post as well. Update the article, yeah, it shows that here. Oh, it's even got the keyword there, and it's tagged with that keyword. Wow, this is actually a really nice one. And they're using um, it's the articles, and you can search by tags, Rails tags. There's all these articles. Ha! This is pretty cool, great for a simple one. I really think this is a good job. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> so let's see how to get started. Um... First off, we'll roll this over to the side and open up a terminal. Open up our terminal on the on the left side here. So ls, we've got. We want to change desks into the desktop. We're going to change desks into our Odin project directory. There we've got my first Rails app. This will be um, so we can go Rails, new, blog. What do we call this one? Blog, app. 
Cool. And so that will generate us a new Rails app. Mm -hmm. Rails new. And now we can go Rails-V, just so you guys know, Ruby-V. This is what I'm working with right now. We're Ruby 3.0 and Rails 7.04. Okay, cool. And so now, if we were to change directories, we want to change directories into the blog app. And we list out what's there. We see just a basic Ruby on Rails app. And so, um, yeah, I guess we could try Rails S, but that shouldn't work. Oh, it is working. So if we do Rails S, then it automatically loads to uh, localhost 3000. Or I guess it doesn't say that here. If you copy that, what does it do? Yeah, it shows it there. But you can also go localhost 3000. These are all common ways of getting there. And then if you want to interrupt the traffic using an IP address, you can use that. But for the time being, we'll just do localhost. And yeah, we can stop the server. And now we'll just use Visual Studio Code. So we'll go code, period. And that should open up the project. And now we'll have all of our code in here. And we can get started. And so... Yeah, the first thing that we should probably do is open up the routes file and set the root to the articles of the index. And then we can get rid of these things. Cool. So now if I save that and refresh this page. Oh, wait. In order to refresh the page, we need to run Rails S in our terminal. But you know what? We can tr cancel this and come back over to here and open the terminal in here. And so now we'll be using the terminal within our Visual Studio code which should make things a little easier for us. And so now if we go Rails S, uh, it looks like we're here. And now if we refresh, we can see uninst uninstantialized constant articles controller. Did you mean abstract controller? No, well, we want to do articles controller. We might as well. Um, but I think we can make this blogs. Let's make it blogs. And then we're going to open up a new terminal for us to operate on. So um, we're going to say Rails generate but you don't have to say generate you can just say g and then you can say scaffold so that gives us the whole create read update and destroy uh elements rails g scaffold and then blogs i think i'm going to go blog and then so we're going to have a title which is a string a body which is a string and We'll start with that for now. Let's check out our example. What else did they have? Read more. Server go start port 5000. <laughs> categories, but categories are a reference. And so we want to wait until we create that. So yeah, we'll just start with uh, the title and the body. So now I'm going to just kind of go through this real quick, what it's going to do. If we go to the database, we'll see that um, oh, we're still doing SQLite. Okay. If I run this, we're going to see that a pirate, a file came up called the, the migrate. Uh, and so that's creates this. And this is just basically a Ruby way of writing, um, SQL or it's basically just database interpolation. So now what we have to do is now that we've ran a scaffolding, so we've created this sort of structure for saving blog objects to the database, we're going to say rails or uh, rails db migrate and that you'll see a pop file pops up here calls uh, schema and the schema is our database schema which is basically the map for how we save things to the database and the this this one has this um, timestamp here so it's 2022 right now perhaps that might just be a chance but essentially this is milliseconds and so as you move through your application and you develop it there's going to be different times when you're going to have different data. And so having these timestamps is, is pretty important. Um, but now we should have a blog situation. Um, so let's see. Here we've got, I'm going to rename this. This is our server. And then I'm going to make this, rename this one. And this one's going to be our console. And so now if we were to go Rails C, we should be able to say blog.new. And then that'll give us these things. And so with a, with a new blog here, this is, this is just a new blog instantiation in the REPL. And so now we, now we have blogs. Now, you need to be able to save a blog for it to exist. So we could say b is equal to blog.new. And now if we were to say blog.title, we set the title to the first blog post. 
And then we set the uh, blog dot body. What did we say? Is that what we named it in the schema? Yeah. We're going to say that's equal to this is the body of the first blog post. Enjoy. Useful program. OK, now if we check out our B, you see we have this. Um, B was the variable that we set to um, this initial uh, new block, right? Now if we go b.save, it responds with true. And now if we check our blogs, blog.all, we see we see that there's a blog in here. So now we have a blog saved into our database. And I think it's development SQL. OK. Um, so yeah, we've got our server running still. And so now what happens if we come back over to localhost 3000? OK, well, because we set the root to blogs index, and we did re re rendered a scaffold, um, we've now got a functional um, website. So here we go. Um, Let's see, what did I want to say here? OK, yeah, our console here. Yeah, this is where we did the um, generate scaffold blog title string body, all that stuff, right? Now, this is um, really useful stuff. So let's see. We, we already went over how we created the migration file in the database. But then we also created a model here. So here, if we go up uh, at models, you'll see that we have here. And this is just a, um, a class that holds the um, the the uh, model's relationship to the database. So that's one thing. And then we created some test files. We don't really want to go through that because this is kind of early. Um, it says that in the, um, in the route file, it created a resources for blogs. And so if we come here, we see that. So that scaffolding actually did this. I like to have the root at the, um, at the top of the file. And so I like to start listing the resources underneath. Cool. Now that doesn't make a single difference. It's just organization. It's not important. Um, and then we created a controller as well. And now you see these controllers have all of these things. Um, let's go match pound dot star. So what I've done here, and then forward slash new line, is I've created, I've got control F, and I want to replace all this stuff with nothing. And so that's just a regular expression that takes this line and then it replaces it with that. So if I run it once, you'll see that it starts to get rid of all the comments. So yeah, that's, this is a quick, easy way to get rid of comments. And it didn't care for the indentions, so I'm just going to get rid of those. Cool, so now our comments are gone, except for this one. And so, yeah, if we go to the index, we see our all of our blogs. And you see this is the one that I created in the uh, term or, or in, the, um, in the console. And so, yeah, we could create a new one and then say uh, this blog was created from the internet body. It's great to be able to make internet blogs. So. Cool. So if we create that one, and then we have another one. It says you've created it successfully. This is the title. This is the body. And yeah, we have a button here to destroy it, or we can edit this one. We can edit it. Let's go back to the blogs. And you can see we have two of them here. So yeah, this is kind of moving along pretty well. So I'm just going to save that. Let's look back here. Do they have any sort of specifications for what's needed here? When you're finished, push your code to GitHub. Don't forget to deploy your app to Heroku. The official Ruby guides. Introduction to core Ruby tools. Wow. So it really depends on how simple I'm going to go with this. Um, OK, so I guess the first thing we should do is get it pushed up, right? So git status. Right now, we can see that there is a lot of untracked git stuff. And so what I'll do now, um, oh wait, you know what? This is in the Odin project. No, CD, my first Rails app. Git status. OK. So if we go to the blog app and we list out everything there and we get status, we see that it's all here. So let's say git add and say git commit dash m. And we're going to say add 
initial blog structure. Now we go get push. Does that push it up to the right place? No. Okay, cool. So what we want to go do is go to GitHub. Uh, and then I'm just going to go to my username. You want to go to your own. And we can push this up to a new repository and say Odin Project Blog App. And we can have me as the owner, a blog app for the Odin Project. Cool. Create this repository. And now that it's created like this, we can say push an existing repository from the command line. So then we just cop the, copy these ones. All right. Okay, now if we refresh this, we have it up here. So now we've deployed it to GitHub. Cool. And yeah, LS. let's see, we've got everything. So the next thing would be to, we might as well just deploy it to Heroku. So we can go Heroku login. And I should already be logged in. Press any key to open the browser. Nice. So I can log into Heroku just from here. It's probably going to give me two-step authentication, so I'm going to have to look that up. Authentication. And that was just from my mobile phone using an authenticator app. Okay, so now that we're logged in, it looks like we could go... Um, I guess we could just look it up, Heroku Deploy. Review Heroku Deployment here. So this is how we deployed it to Heroku. Now, this information is going to be right as long as Odin projects up to date. So if I were you, I'm going to go Heroku deploy Rails app. This is going to get you, because we're on Rails dash V, I'm going to do Rails 7. You can do whichever kind you want, whichever kind matches your thing. And then we'll just go through this here really quickly. So Rails, so this is, they're going through in a way that just shows you how to set up a new app. We're not going to do that. Okay, cool. So we want to change the seek. SQL gem and the Postgres gem. So let's go command P, gem file. Uh, we see the SQL light here. We want to just change that to Postgres. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then we should be able to go bundle. Huh, my terminal's trashed. Let's go. Oh, first we should stop the server because changing the database is going to change that. And we can go bundle install. While I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to do another find. And I'm going to go pound dot plus to get all those. And then the new line. And uh, pound dot plus. We'll just go through these ones. And just uh, replace them with nothing. So get rid of all these comments. We don't want to get rid of that. Yeah, we might as well get rid of that. Anything that's not actually being used, we'll just get rid of. We don't want to get rid of that. Nice. Then we can get rid of the spaces here. Redis. Use that later. Boot snap, it's just like a quick way, quick way of loading things. We have the development. Looks like we messed up the spacing there. We want to get that right. Um, oh yeah, you might be wondering, how do I back tab? Shift tab will get you back one. Cool, and so now our gem file's uh, saved up a little bit. If we ran bundle install, nothing should change. And we're good. So now we've got Postgres installed. Uh, let's go back to the server and see if we get any problems running the server. Cool. We don't. And if we were to go back to our blog app, 
SQLite active activator. Missing a gem, it depends on. Okay, Puma caught this error in your gem file. Okay, replace gem. SQL, SQL. I'm going to go command cap SQL. I'm going to search SQL everywhere. Get ignore. That's unimportant. It's not going to matter. Might as well get rid of it. Now, my guess is that what's happening here is it's going to the database file and it's sounding that SQL thing. Hmm. Did I just change that with the get ignore? No. And what happens if we go SQL? Development SQL. Okay, we want to get rid of that. I don't think it's there. Uh, and then we'll go Command Shift S, and we'll find all the uh, SQL, all the mentions of SQL. Okay, cool. And this is not surprising. If I think that if we go back to what it's doing is telling us that our database config file is not right. And so that's if you look at the file structure. If you go down to config and you see your database file, that's here. There's some big problems here because we're using an adapter of SQL and that doesn't exist. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, here we go. This is just, just telling us how to config our database. So everything that's prepended per, per, with the comma is going to, or the uh, pound symbol, is going to be uh, comments that you would probably want to keep in yours, but I'm not going to keep in mine just because I kind of understand how this works. So we're just going to paste in this and get rid of the old config file. And then I'm just going to get rid of everything. It's not actually important. So we'll get rid of all this production stuff. I don't necessarily recommend anybody else doing this if you're not familiar with Rails, but to me, I just want to keep this thing um, manageable. Cool. So now if we save that and we restart our server, we should see it working over here now. If we go back and refresh. Cool, and say it says we have mi migration spending. So this is a great example of an error that you're commonly going to see. Uh, when you see that, you're going to have to go over here and say Rails DB migrate. So whenever you think pending migrations, go over here and do Rails DB migrate. Now, if we refresh the page, we'll see it's good. Now, because we deleted our old database and we started with a new Postgres database, all our old blogs are done. So first, so this is going to be our first PG database entry. Uh, this is the blog post for the first useful programmer database entry. So we could create that and we see we've got our first entry. And if we wanted to get crazy, we could go to console, Rails C, and we could be like blog.new and we could add the title as blogging from the console and title. I think we could actually, yeah, title uh, body, set that equal to, this is, is the body from the console. Cool. And now if we inspect our blog elements there and we can go blog.save to save it. And now if we refresh the page, well, we need to go back to blogs original. We see blogging from the console. So we're creating elements and saving them to a Postgres database. Great. Um, one of the things I would recommend is changing all of these things. You don't want my app test development. So let's change this to uh, blog app for uh, Odin project. Cool. And Username, blog app for Orden project. Uh, in production out of database, we can, and then we'll have um, this be Odin project blog. And what does this mean? I'll show you later. We actually have to configure this with Heroku in order to get it to work. But anyways, now our database should be functional. Um, I think if we were to go to the server, well, we can do restart, I think. Restart. What happens if re... Oh, well. Um, if we were to press Command-C and then start the server again, we should have... Oh, no database error. Okay. So, 
This is a good example of, of a common error that you're going to run into. Um, I should have expected this. The reason that you don't want my app here is so that if you have my app here, you're going to have different Rails apps act, uh, accessing the same database and you're going to get weird errors. But So you want to customize your things here. And so when you don't do that, you need to start over from scratch. So I'm going to press Command C and what we're going to do is go bin slash setup. Bin setup drops the old database and then creates a new one and then starts it. And so now if we refresh, um, oh, we need to start the server. We can see that it's running again, but we have deleted our old database because now we have another database that has that my app thing in it, but this one's the a different name. So we're using a different database name. Now, instead of continuously having that problem of writing test blogs and seeing them not uh, come across, what we can do is load them into uh, seeds dot rb right and so here in the database we have seeds so what you can do is go like uh, blog one like first blog oh man i haven't done this in a while it's equal to blog dot create title first seed blog body the body of the first seed blog And then I think character.create name. Okay, and then they're saying that that's a character. And now I think we can come to here and say, let's start another one, which is just a ZHS. And we can say Rails DB seed load. Doesn't DB test load. Rails task. I haven't done that in a while, actually. Seeds. Rails DB seed. Okay, it's cool. So it's probably just Rails DB seed. Nice. And now if we refreshed, we see our first seed block and our first uh, seed block from here. And so this way, if we mess up our database again and, or we reset the server or whatever, we can just do that. And so I think we can just do blog.create. And this could be like second right and so now if we were to save that and run rails db seed if we refresh we're gonna see interesting okay so it didn't delete that one so yeah anyways this is just how you can seed you can create a ton of um, of example data and using your seed files so let's move on um what would be the next good project for here uh Let's see, we should get a, just a super simple bootstrap setup in here. So bootstrap five uh, starter template. Okay, cool. So the reason I like the starter template, especially when you're just starting off on projects like this, is that you can, yeah, just do a quick start guide and you can come down here and they have your starter template. Now, if you were to inspect your blog app right now, you'll see that the, the head's very small. It's got, this is all the stuff that's just Rails built in. And then you've got some basic blog style stuff. And this is just how Rails works. But what we want to do is just inject these tiny little things that make it so that it works. So with um, this one, what we can do is go to our application.html.erb file. And so here, what we can do is just inject this. Now, the great thing about just doing it like this is that we can remove this later and we've just got the bootstrap functionality with this with a CDN. And so if you decide to use a different um, CSS uh, framework, then you don't have to worry about this getting in the way. So that's why I like to just import these. I mean, it looks like there's not a huge amounts of difference, right? So it's got the title. So we don't need to worry about the title. We already have the title right here and right here. It's got the UTF-8, do we have that? And the viewport width initial scale equals one. We have that. Um, UTF-8, I wonder if that's showing up here. UTF-8. Okay, so that's not, so let's add this one in. And then we want the bootstrap CSS.
we'll add that in underneath. And up above it, we're just going to say bootstrap CSS. And then press uh, command, space, uh, command tab to comment it out. And then at the bottom, we want the JavaScript to make the JavaScript work. So we're going to copy this. And we'll notice it needs to be within the body elements. So we're going to paste it in here. Cool. And now we should see this work immediately. Oh, and I'm just going to make a note here that this is bootstrap uh, JS. And then command J to comment it out. And now if we refresh the page and we come over here and we refresh, because of the difference in the font, we, know, we, we understand that the um, CSS is loaded. So we're actually using Bootstrap, which I think we've used before. Um, so yeah, another gr the great thing about this is if you want to get rid of this and you want to use a different CSS framework, you can just um, copy these out. Also, you can build it into the Rails app using gems. So, but this is just a great way to get started initially. Um, so yeah, our blogs are happening here now. And so what should we do next? Let's see, yeah, so we can show this blog. This shows us each one. Well, I guess one thing that we could do initially is let's look at examples of things that we might want to use. So I'm going to use cards for this. Let's see here. Layout, grid, containers, content, forms, components, helpers. Yeah, let's just use cards. I think this will be easier. Cool. And so here we have an example of a card. Oh. List group. Yeah, so I'm just looking through here. Let's see. Let's actually start with layout containers. I want everything to be in a container, div class container. So yeah, one th way that we can do this quite simply, yield is going to inject the content that's super, that's in deeper on the on the app. And so what we can do here is just start with a div of a class equal to container. And um, we can close that out here. And now if we go back after I save that, if we refresh over here and we go back to the original page, you see now it's in a container. So if you see our container in encapsulates this whole thing. And so this is part of how um, how uh, Bootstrap works. And so, yeah, container. Now let's look at rows. Uh, uh, well, no, let's go straight to components and see how this works. So let's grab a card. And um, yeah, I like just grabbing them here. Okay, so this one looks pretty cool. We can delete stuff off of here. So let's just copy all this. And what we want is for each of our blogs to be a card. So if we go to views, blogs, we know from the rendering portion that if we go here, we get the blog. And so this is great. Now, if we were to look here and we inspect, we're going to see that this um, P, P, that matches this is that P, this is that P. And so we could add like an HR tag here and say something like, uh, each blog. So now we save that. We can see each blog is here. Each blog is here. So what we do with this render partial is we're we're um, creating a new element for each thing. So let's paste in this card element, and then yeah. For now, I think we can. Um, well, yeah. Let's just save it and see what happens. All right, cool. We've got separate cards on each one. And so instead of having the blog. So let's take this ID and copy that and put it in each one. Oh, and I'm going to get rid of this 18 style. I think we want them just to be full length. Nice. So now they match just the width of the page. Um, cool. And so now we can take that DOM ID and we might as well put it in here. So we make that ID. Now we just want to keep all this kind of Rails important stuff in here. Um, the card body. Here it says card title. Um, card title, but we don't want it to say card title. We just want it to say the title that we have entered. So the blog, which is being passed into here and then rendered in here, is here. Um, yeah. So we want to put the card title here. So now if we save that, we're going to see our first seed blog. 
our first seed blog, and then our second seed blog. So now we're filling in these. Now for the time, this one is, uh, we don't have an image, so we might as well get that out of there. And so our second seed blog. And then our next thing, instead of doing three list groups, Let's, it says an item, a second item, and a third item. Let's just get rid of these ones for now. And we can just add the blog title, blog body in here. And now if we refresh, we see that we have, cool, now it's working out better, right? We've got our first seed blog and that. Um, our blog title and body. So we've got all the information that's part of that. So we can get rid of this now just to clean it up and then refresh here. Now this is linking to other things, so let's make these links work better. Um, so yeah, Rails has a thing that makes it so that we can go, we can go link to, and then we can add something like hello. If we go over here, you'll see that there's a link to nothing. And so what we want to do is the next parameter is set what it's to. And so we can go, um, the, let's make this to the um, all blogs page. And this would be to the blogs path. And then let's set a class, yeah, blogs path. And so now if we were to refresh and we can see if we click here, we go to all blogs, which is where we already are. Um, but that's, that's good for now. Um, so another thing is we wanna make it so that this looks cooler, so let's say, class and we want to set this now the this is just from bootstrap documentation right um uh, buttons uh and yeah if you come down here you can see button button primary so let's add that as a class here so if we go back to our blog app and we refresh now we've got a better looking button um cool so let's just save this one and we can actually get rid of these other links because oh i don't know if card link would make a difference yeah, I'm just going to do card link there, but then I'm also going to add one without it just to see what happens. Okay, so card link is not an important uh, element for this. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to get rid of card link because we're using buttons. So um, another thing we can do is to go to the blog path and pass in the blog. And the blog is coming from what's being passed in. We should put this in parentheses. And so view, and if we refresh now, we can see view. And this will actually link to that initial blog post. So then we're seeing it like that. And you see that the um, partial is being rendered on the actual blog uh, page as well. So yeah, we got that. And uh, let's see, another thing we could do is uh, edit. And then instead of making it primary, we make it, we'll make this one success. And this one we can make um, uh, uh, warning. Now if we review this, we can see we've got a all blogs, view, and edit. Edit plus. Oh, what we need to say is uh, edit blog path. Now if we refresh, and we should see the edit path. And that'll get us to the page where we're editing it. Yeah. View, edit, and then let's see, we can also do, what is it? Create, read, edit, and destroy. Destroy. And here we can say destroy blog path. And here, I think we need to do method destroy. Back to pod, show this blog path. Type submit. Destroy this post. Where is this going to be? This will be in the partial with the edit. So we could actually check out the code here. Where is it? Show. Destroy this block. So it has this one. So I'm going to copy that and bring it back over here. And so, yeah, we can't do link to. We want to do button to. Destroy this blog post. So we'll just do that. And we want to say the... We want to pass in the blog. Oh man, I don't even remember how that works. 
we'll comment this out so it doesn't show up. Now we can refresh. Oh, and we want to make this a class button danger. Instead of warning, we'll make it danger. Refresh the page. Now we should have a destroy path. So the first seed blog, um, it might be destroyed after this. Cool. So now we only have one first seed blog, which is perfectly fine because they were to be in duplicates anyways. So right now we have that. I think that there's a way to alert or confirm. Are you sure? And that will make it so it doesn't destroy immediately, but that's not right. Let's see here. Uh, confirm Rails record destroy. Check to see if the record is destroyed. Okay. Uh, flash messages. That's actually not what we're looking up. Flash messages. Uh, yeah, well, for this, it doesn't really matter. We don't need to have this. I mean, right now, the way that we're developing it, we're just getting it done. So if we go to our blog app, and we only have one blog post left, and we say destroy, well, what we can do is just come back down here, and we can go uh, Rails DB Seed. And then if we refresh here, we've got them back. And so, yeah, that works. Now, I don't like that in the card body, these links are all messed up. So what I want to do is add them into a row. Row. And we'll close the row. See if this gets them lined up correctly. Button blah. OK. It didn't affect that one, button danger. And so let's put in here button block just to see if we can get them all to stretch out. Save that and refresh. Hmm. OK, instead of button block, we'll go PY3. Uh, sorry, uh, MY1, just to give them some spacing. And you know what? We'll just leave out the destroy button for now because I don't want to deal with that. Um, so yeah, we come back over here and we refresh. This is showing up like that because of there. So if we refresh, we're pretty good. So now we have a title, uh, some quick example of text. We actually don't need this either, so we'll just get rid of it. And we'll save that and refresh. And there we have it. So yeah, I think this could be a card header. Yeah, let's do that, the header and that. And now these rows, it's kind of annoying having them all like that. So we could do um, uh, call them, uh, there's three of them. So three divided by 12 is four. So call four, that'll put them next to each other. And the spacing should be on top, bottom and left. So let's go M1 just to get them all that. And four, six, nine. Mm. What if we do three? That's not right. Call. OK, so margin P1. Uh, what happens if we just do that? I don't, maybe we don't need the margin because the columns will have separations. And uh, Bootstrap will automatically do the spacing for you if you just do call. And then we could probably do MD ML1 margin. If we do margin one, no, padding one. Oh, we need to do it with each of them. So I'm just going to make multiple cursors with the common uh, and one. All right, so cool. Now we've got the buttons there. Now, where is this show this blog coming from? So just Command Shift S, show this blog. And it's going to show up in two places, the index page here and the link to page here. 
Now, uh, since we don't need it on the index page, show this blog, we can get rid of this now. And if we refresh, that's gone. Uh, cool. And so we probably want the blogs to not just be right on top of each other like this. So we could do class, and then we can go um, margin 3, which will give them some space. But if we go P3, that'll give them some space only uh, margin of 3. That'll give them some space top to bottom from each other. P, uh, P, Y. M, Y. That's right. M, Y is for top and bottom. So that way we don't get that messed up side project there. And so, yeah, now we've got our blogs are here. And so we've got our new blog button. Um, we don't want that there. We want this, or we want there to be a new blog, sure. But we want that to be at the top because as the blogs fill in, it will completely obfuscate that. Um, cool. And then here we want to make it a proper uh, tab, right? So we want to say class is equal to button, button, primary. And if we refresh here, now we'll have a new blog thing here. Nice. Okay. If we inspect, we see we've got our container. And then within that, we have our button. And then we have our blogs. Within our blogs, we have different cards. And so, actually, we probably want to put the blogs within a row. Class is equal to row. So now what happens? And we want to put, add this guy into a row as well, in my opinion. Class. And that way, we can put the blogs and that on the same one. And so we could go uh, div class is equal to column. And then we put our blog's title in there, close that div, and then div class equals column. And we can put this button in there, and that should put them on the same page, or on the same line. And if we refresh over here, we've done it, cool. And so I want to go button block. Button block. I think that actually was discontinued. Block. Block buttons. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, cool. I'm not going to worry about that for now. So now, yeah, we've got a pretty good one. So all blogs, it goes back to there. This is obviously silly because this button shouldn't show up. So we could actually take that out. Like, so if we went to column. We could say link to that. Uh, can you do if unless current path is blogs path? This might not work at all. This current page. Nice. So yeah, unless the current page is equal to the blogs path, then render the all blogs. So it's not going to render it there, and it's only going to render it here. Um, yeah, nice. Okay, so now we have blogs coming up. So we've got, there's one, and there's two. We can create a new one. Now this form looks like uh, rubbish, right? So we should use our form helper. Um, are we going to do that in the context of this article? Let's see. Well, we have that. So our blogs thing's basically here. How much of our project really wants us to do this? Make sure you commit to Git regularly. So if you run into any issues, you can revert to an earlier path. Da da da. When you're finished, push your code to GitHub. Okay, cool. So let's do some stuff like Git status. So what have we done in here? Now we should have done. Um, we should say Git add uh, DB seeds. And we should say git commit dash m add seeds for blogs to add seeds for blogs. So now we could git push that and we've got a good, we're starting to build a good commit history. If we were to go back to our here and we refresh the page, 
we're going to see that 10 seconds ago this was, and we've got ad seeds for blogs. So that's considered good. Um, I would say that that's like small um, improvements. So if we were to look at it, what do we do, do to the gem file? We can say git, I'm going to make this go up, git diff gem file. Uh, we remove the comments and ch change it. Yeah, so we removed the comments and we changed P uh, SQL for Postgres. So we can say git add gem file. And we say git commit dash M, remove comments and switch to Postgres. Now, ideally, actually, I wouldn't want to do that together. I would just try to do it with just the comments, but uh, I would just say remove comments, and then I'd want to have another one, which was switch to Postgres. And so get status. I would, the switch to Postgres was here with the database as well. So what I really would have liked to do is get add that place where we shift the gem files. And then, um, but since we kind of already did that, I'm going to say, Get add code base so we could get commit dash m and then this is um, configure database uh, configure Postgres database and remove SQL light get push okay cool and uh, so we can say get diff what about our config routes Okay, all that did was remove a little comma. We're just going to leave that with whatever. Uh, the schema, diff, db schema. Nice. Okay, so now let's go get status, and we'll this next um, post will be add the views, and the we're going to basically add blogs. So let's say get add the. Well, let's just get add everything. So now if we go to get status, you'll see that we're staging everything uh the gem file dot lock i mean uh we should have done that when we adjusted the pg thing and then the routes just that's not anything really important in the schema there so basically this is going to be add uh we're going to say git commit and then our message is going to be add uh, blogs to we're just going to say add blogs and then we can say git push This isn't exactly a great way of doing this because, you know, we added the seeds beforehand, but as you can see now, the git commit history will be pretty simple. So now, because we're committing every period of time, if we were to make a mistake, we could revert back to this commit, and that would make it so that our development process wouldn't get messed up too badly. Okay, so I guess the question is, what are we going to do next? Um, yeah, so let's push this up to Heroku so we've got a working app. So, um, Heroku, git, push, Heroku, main. Okay, Heroku does not appear to be a history. So, yeah, let's go back to our his, uh, Heroku stuff. Uh, right here, they're telling us to generate a controller. We've already done that. Uh, and for previous gems, the gem can be... Uh, Rails 12 factor gem to enable static asset serving. The gem can be removed from existing upgraded application if the code is present. But I don't think that this is accurately something that we need to do. So again, what we're doing right now is configuring the um, production app. And so we want to go to git config, and then we're going to see in git config, we're going to see environments production. So we're going to, in our environments is our production code. And the first thing I'm going to do is just see if this is there. I'm just going to copy that, command paste. Okay, it's not there. So previous versions of Rails require Rails 12 factor enable static. New Rails applications don't need this gem. The gem can be removed from existing ones. So I guess do we have Rails 12 factor authentication in our gem file? If we search for it, Rails. 12. Okay, we don't have that, so this is an unnecessary step. So in our gem file, we want to specify our, specify our ver version of Ruby. Okay, so this one says it wants Ruby 3.0.2, so we might as well change that. That's going to break a few things, so let's stop the server. And now if we were to go to Rails S, it's going to say you can't do that, so we're going to go RVM, use 
3.0.2. And now we should be able to go Rails S. Okay, so it's not allowing us to do that. Bundle install. Okay, cool. And now if we were to go to get status, we'll see that there's two changes, right? Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, cancel out of our console. And, uh, but our server, if we were to Rails S now, our server should load. And you'll see that won't destroy the database. As you can see, it's still working. So switching the Ruby version wasn't that big of a deal. Um, so yeah, that's what we did. Uh -huh. So it asks us to use that. Uh, store the app in Git. Okay, we've already done this, Git init. This is just saying your initial commit. And um, so yeah, let's actually do a Git status. We can go Git add, Git commit. Uh, and what's the message? We want to upgrade Ruby version to 3.0.2. Git push. And then again, if you go over to the commits, you'll see that each of these commits basically gives you a little step along the way. And so this is a good way to be developing it. And then you'll see that all your files will have different, you know, stages of production. And this is a good way to understand whether how how applications are developed. So it's a good habit to get into. Okay, so now we want to deploy our application to Heroku. And so I'm going to minimize this. We're not doing any um, code changes, so we're just going to go um, Heroku create. And because we already logged in, remember Heroku login? I'm already logged in. Oh, I'm just going to press Q to exit, but I'm already logged in. Um, so we'll move to the next one. Uh, the Heroku CLI adds Git remote automatically. Verify is set with Git config git config uh yeah i think oh okay with git config let's do that cool and it shows the remotes and you'll see that um heroku has given us this boiling it, it gives um kind of two uh description an adverb and a verb or and a noun an ad adjective and a noun to uh define your locations and so um yeah, because we've just done Heroku there, we haven't deployed anything there. There will be nothing here just yet. But at a certain point, boiling chamber will work. So because it's we didn't get fatal, uh, we know that it's working right now. So now we can do git push Heroku main. And so this is going to take a while. It's going to do this whole thing of setting it up. And uh, that'll take a while, but um, yeah. The way that we had to migrate the database in our local machine, we had to do HDB migrate. We also had to do that. We also have to make sure we do that in the production environment. Otherwise, it won't work exactly as planned. But um, yeah, for now, I am just going to let this run, and then we'll get back as soon as it's done pushing to the main branch of Heroku servers. Okay, I probably messed it up when I did Heroku login. So I'm just going to re-log in and see if that ha messed it up. Cool, so now we're going to go git push Heroku main. Nice. Okay, so yeah, I just messed it up when I said we already logged in and that sort of thing. Okay, cool. So we've got an error message. The Ruby version you are trying to install does not exist on the stack. You are trying to install 3.0.2. Ruby 3.0.2 is present on the following stacks. Heroku 18 and Heroku 20. Heroku recommends you use the latest supported Ruby version listed here. Uh, let's open that up. I command click the link to open it up. And so... 3.0, oh, 3.1, wow, MRI. On Heroku 22, supported runtimes. 
Is this for Hiroko Tuni too? Three point oh point four for Hiroko eighteen and twenty only. Three point one point two and three point three point seven. That looks like for Hiroko twenty twenty two. And since we're doing it in twenty two, we might as well do it. So, um, yeah. Okay. Do we have? Um, let's get this back over here. I'm going to check for a Ruby version manager list. Now, do we have 3.1.2? We don't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to go RVM install 3.1.2. Okay, so what we're doing now is installing Ruby 3.1.2, and that way we'll be able to use this Heroku-22 once it's complete. And so, yeah, this is going to take a while. And so I'm just going to step aside for now. I don't know how to pass in a argument to use a different Heroku version. And I think if you're starting a new app, you might as well use the most recent version rather than some already deprecated thing. And so for that, I think it's useful to go 3.1.2. And we're going to have some funny Git history because on our commits, uh, we have here that we upgraded to version 3.0.2, and then our next commit will be that we're upgrading to 3.1.2. So we'll just wait until this goes by, and I'll see you guys after we install Ruby 3.1.2 onto our machines. All right, so now if we go RVM, the, it looks like Ruby was built without documentation. Uh, that means that looks good, and there's no real errors here. Uh, dramatic errors to be seen. I'm guessing if we go RVM list, we now have 3.1.2. So we can go RVM use uh, 3.1.2. And now if we go uh, Ruby dash V, we should have 3.1.2. Now, there's another thing that we have to do. Remember, we did it just recently. Um, we need to go to our gem file, gem file, uh, and go back up to here. And we want to specify 3.1.2. Okay, cool. Now we're going to have to bundle install again. And we want to make sure I'm going to cancel the server. I'm going to close. No, we don't have any console going on right now. But um, for now, what we could do is go uh, bundle install. All right. So it's going to go through and reassess that. What's that really going through is checking out all the dependencies on all these gems and making sure that they all work. Uh, the public API for some Ruby classes have changed. Please ensure your gem files are suitably restrictive to avoid unexpected. Uh, cool. This looks like it's just a warning for Ruby zip, which is coming up. And that's a dependency of these things, so I don't even really know what that is. For now, we can ignore it. Um, we got to get back to what we were doing, though, right? What are we doing? We want to deploy our um, Ruby version. So the last point that we got to was up here. We had uh, git push Heroku main, and it did not work because we had the an unacceptable Ruby version. And so now if we go uh, Ruby dash V, uh, we have uh, 3.1.2, which is uh, what is required in order to be up here. And so we should be able to go um, push to the main now by doing git push Heroku main. So we'll go down here and oh, git push Heroku main. Okay, cool. So once again, it's going to load. It looks like we're already getting errors. I might not even have to say goodbye yet. Man, Ruby 3. Point is present in the following stack. Let's make this big. 3.0.2 is present on the following stacks. The Ruby version you are trying to install does not exist on this stack. You are trying to install Ruby 3.0.2. Uh, so I'm going to go Command Shift F and see if 3. Point, what is it? 0.2 is on our stack anywhere. Um, okay, there's another place that you can see it here. Okay, so if you go to dot Ruby version, which is in the main thing, you can set this differently. So, so we want to set that 3.1.2. And now we'll go git status, git add. We're going to add all this, and we're going to say git commit dash m. 
upgrade to Ruby 3.1.2. Now we can say git push. What is this going to do? This is going to push it to Heroku, right? If we were to go to Heroku right now, our most recent one was 3.0.2. If we push this up um, and we go back over here, we can see we've upgraded to 3.1.2. Okay, so now my guess is that that's what was causing our uh, git push Heroku master not to or Heroku main not to work. So we're going to try that again. And I find that uh, deploying apps to production is always like that. Failed install gems via bundler. So bundle install. Uh, failed to push to boiling chamber. So I don't know if bundle install made a difference. Let's run the push main again. Nice. Looks like it's going correctly now. No. Failed to install gems via bundler. Failed to install gems via bundler. The same version of this code has already been built. We have detected that you have triggered a build from the source version at least twice. One common cause of this behavior is attempting to deploy it from a different branch. Branch or on main git status. Git log. Looks like on our log we've upgraded the Ruby versions. Git status. Okay, so hmm, I'm going to have to run that again just because I didn't see the error messages. Uh, compiling Rails version 3.1.2, running bundle without test development install. Your bundle only support platforms on your local machine. Add the current platform to the lock file with and try again. Okay, so what we want to do is copy this and add it to the lock file, but we don't make the lock file, we do it with the gem file, so we want to add this down to the bundle. Bundle lock. Um, so let's see if that makes a difference. Git status, git at uh, bundle install. Let's see if that worked. Okay, that did not work. So let's go back to that production error. Now it's, now it's failing there. Bundle lock. Oh, okay, so this is actually a bundle command, not something to add to the gem file. So we'll go back to the gem file and get rid of this. Make sure this nothing's changed. Okay, git status says nothing's changed. And so we're going to say bundle lock add platform, this guy. Git status, gem file dot lock has changed. So git add, git commit dash m. What was it that we did? Uh, add per Heroku instructions. And okay, git status. Now we can see we've got this change there. We can say git um, uh, push. So we push this change to GitHub. And now we want to say git push Heroku uh, main. Cool. And so now we'll see if this is working. Okay, this is a very good sign. It seems to be working. So yeah, the instructions, I don't think they actually tell you that you need to um, add that in there. So that's one of these reasons I wanted to make this video is just because it shows you how to find errors and work your way through them despite the fact that there's oftentimes not great documentation for this stuff. So the fact that this is all still going is all a really good sign. Looks like there's no proc file detected. There's going to be a handful of errors, and all these things are things you can pay attention to. But right now, it looks like it has been deployed. Um, so yeah, just like in your local environment, in the um, de de uh, deployed environment, you need to run the same ones. So you just like you would say uh, Rails DB migrate, well, you can also say Heroku run Rails DB migrate. But before I run that, let me show you what's going on here. So I want to actually get this error. So I'm going to comp delete all this. I'm not going to migrate yet. 
And if you scroll down, you see Heroku open, it will open it. So if we go Heroku open, it should open, yeah, the app here. Now this is great. You see it says, we're sorry something went wrong. How do we test that? Say, okay, what went wrong? Let's go um, Heroku logs tail. No, I think it's log tails. It's not a Heroku command. Uh, okay, so let's go back, logs tail. Heroku logs tail, that's it. Heroku logs dash dash tail. So this is how you look up errors in um, your production environment. And so if we were to open up this terminal, we're gonna see that, um, uh, well, let's refresh the error right now. Refresh the error, this will show what's going on. And if we look through here, we should see some sort of an error that relates to that. Uh, action view, template error. Relation blogs does not exist. So that tells you that there's something wrong with our stuff, right? And so what we need to do, that says that there's a database error because it's not recognizing that there is a blog. And so what we wanna do now is uh, go back up to here and run Heroku run DB migrate. So that migrates the database so that the Postgres database that the production environment's looking at is actually has been migrated and is updated. And if that's really new to you, then that's a challenge at first, but it gets easier. So cool. Now, if we were to come over here to our deployed app and refreshed, you'd see it actually exists and it's on the internet now. And we can say uh, first blog from the internet. This is the body. This is the blog post from the, yeah. From the, for the first blog developed on the internet. We create that and it works. So we have deployed a blogging app to the uh, Heroku. And so for the basics of this, um, we have created a solution. And so let's uh, submit it. Um, so currently, yeah, we've got our GitHub a link and we have a, a public link. Um, we could go back to blogs and we could go home. Uh, that just shows us the blogs page. Um, cool. So. Yeah, this is local, we can close that, and we don't need these instructions anymore. So let's deploy it. Um, let's like submit our solution. We can add the solution, GitHub repository URL here. So we take the GitHub repository, and then our live preview example is here. So if we take that and put it in here, and we might as well make it public, and we can submit now. Okay, thanks for submitting your close solution, and it looks like ours is the most recent one. And if we did live preview, it shows up, and we could do a new one. Uh, from Odin project to useful programmer. Uh, uh, this is the first blog post after the project was initially submitted. Create that one. And this just took us to the blog post pages. So if we go back to the original, we see we've got it's all there. And so we've deployed it there. And if we view the code, this will show up on GitHub. And so we're pretty good to go for now. So we can might as well just close out of everything. And yeah, you could consider this completed. I'm think if we went to the paths page, um, we would see that it's completed. However, I'm not completely com done with this project app. Oh, it's not completed yet. Oh, you, can you just you, know, you can just click them to make them go. I'm not completely done with the project, the, the blog app. I'd like to make more. If you guys are interested in seeing me do user authentication, um, image uploads, any sort of things that's related to, to Rails, let me know in the sections and I'll slowly develop this blog app. I'd be down to have user authentication, make it so users can only edit their own blogs, uh, make it so their blogs look really cool, do so, all sorts of stuff with this blog app because it's a great um, opportunity to um, display information. We could even do testing, cucumber testing, behavior driven development testing, uh, acceptance testing, all that stuff we could get started on here. So if you're interested in any of those subjects, let me know and I'll work them into this video. But until then, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.